Do you make leather or cord jewelry and wish you could find a quick and easy but professional way to finish it? If so, these little doodads are your friends. Sometimes they're called cord ends, sometimes they go by other names, but stick around for five tips on how to buy them and use them to finish your jewelry. Hey there, Sandy here with another creative tutorial at keepsakecrafts.net. One thing you may have found annoying if you've been trying to buy these findings is that they do not go by standardized names. I call these cord ends or fold over cord ends but if you just start searching for cord ends you might find something like these which are also called cord ends or cord end caps and they are an entirely different kind of finding just as useful but very different these ones are called bullet end cap cones I mean the names are all over the place. So here's a trick for you for figuring out the different names they go by is to locate what you're looking for on Amazon. And if it's sold by a Chinese company, their titles will often be stuffed with every possible variation of the name you can imagine. For this particular one, fold over cord end is a pretty safe bet to find this exact finding. But be sure to look closely at what you are buying. If you're using round cording, then these may be perfect for what you need, in which case check out my video on how to use them. Back to our fold over cord ends or whatever name they're choosing to go by today. So if you look closely, they have two flaps and those are what gets folded over. Some have a little tooth and that can help in holding your cord in place. And then of course they have a loop for attaching to clasps or other parts of your jewelry. If you look at your finding from the end, so you're looking at the U shape, Note if one side is slightly shorter than the other. If that's the case, fold over the shorter ends first. I mean, all of mine, they happen to be the same length, but I have come across some with one side that's just a little bit shorter. Now for doing the actual folding, you can use chain nose pliers, but flat nose pliers with this wide end works more smoothly and easily, and they're also less likely to leave dents. Here I have some silk ribbon, you could also use leather cord, really any cording. You want to place the end of the cording in as far as you can without it sticking out. So you don't want to put it in like this because it's really hard to trim away the excess after crimping. Trim the end of your cord so it's square and neat. If you're stringing beads onto your cord, like here I'm making a very simple necklace. It's just a lampwork bead and this silk cord but make sure you string your beads on before you add the second cord end. So lay the cord in so it's just coming to that edge but without sticking over, just like that. And I'm going to take out the cord for a minute to show you how to position the pliers. If you picture that these three sides are three sides of a square box, you want to put your pliers so they are touching two opposite corners just like that and sometimes that happens let me get my cord back in there and then gently squeeze and squeeze until that flap is holding the cord in place and then use the pliers to squash it flat and then repeat on the other side. Now these ones are pretty soft which really isn't a good thing so I was able to start that with my, my fingers but you do it the same way you have the pliers on two opposite sides of that box and then press and if you move you're finding further down in the jaw of the pliers you'll have even more leverage to squeeze. And once the end of your cord is encased, grab that loop with your pliers and give a good tug. You want to be sure that your jewelry doesn't fall apart. And now I'm ready to add findings like a clasp and jump rings and an extender chain. But what if you can't find findings that are in colors to match your project? If you have to choose between getting assorted sizes or assorted colors, I'd choose the assortment of sizes. 
pick the color that you use the most and then you can color any others as needed with vintage patinas. These are permanent on metal and you can see here I've got a copper bead on my leather cord and this one is the original gold and this one I colored with the copper patina. If you want to learn more about vintage patinas, I've done a video on that that I will link to. Now what about using round cord? I mean just the very nature of these suggests that you want to use flat things, but you can use round cord sometimes depending on what you have. This necklace with the one millimeter cord works perfectly fine with a fold over end. Now this cotton cord, which is like a perfect, makes a perfect man's bracelet, it works well with a heavier quality cord end. But I mentioned that these gold ones are pretty soft and here's what happens. It just pulls right off. These are not as strong as the ones that are going to be a little bit harder to fold over, but that's not pulling off. So you'll have to do some testing with your round cord. It may work with certain findings. One more fun thing you can do is to use multiple cords. You just have to choose an appropriate size finding. Your cords should lay flat inside the finding. So here I have two strips of braided leather and I'll just show you in this other finding. It lays nice and flat right in there. It's perfect. But if I wanted three cords, I would need a wider finding. Now you know how to finish your leather and cord, but you need to know these other techniques and findings in the Jewelry Making 101 playlist I put together for you. See you in the next video.